All right, so we're getting more people trickling in. So I think we'll probably get started because uh, I want to make sure that we have enough time to, to get through the stuff that we want to get through today. Um, today's actually kind of fun. Um, we're branching out from our traditional like rectilinear window object or whatever. And today we're going to get into those organic shapes that everybody always wants to model. So things like drapes and pillows and cushions and that sort of thing. I'm going to walk you through several different strategies to create cushions. The big takeaway today that we're going to work on is a command called network surface or curve network. Um, the reason that it has two names is because the key command that you type in is network SRF. And it's called curve network in the menu structure. So I didn't make the rules, but that's what it is. So we're going to spend time talking through that and kind of explaining that. And we'll go through a variety of organic shapes. And um, hopefully by the end, you'll have some inspiration and it'll help you towards your assignment 201s that you should start uh, kind of working on at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I will record this lecture uh, as I do with all the lectures. So if you come in late, uh, don't worry. Yep, there's that. This website is under heavy load that other people were getting on Canvas. So it's not just you. It's happening to everybody. Um, but of course, I forgot that you guys needed the link that's on Canvas in order to log in. That's why people weren't showing up right away. Um, let me get my chat window up here. There we go. Perfect. And so... Um, it seems like the remote desktop is working. We'll see. Um, but assuming that it is, let's go ahead and open up Rhino. And there we go. Rhino's open. Let me get my workspace organized here. So I'm going to close all of those V-Ray toolbars except for the V-Ray all toolbar. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my end snap, my mid snap, and my perpendicular snap as we kind of get started. So when we start first thinking about pillows or organic shapes and, and cushions and whatever, um, the natural, based on what we've been doing, is essentially to, for example, create a box and let's say this is at uh, you know 24 comma 18, and it's six inches tall. Is to create a box, and then say, okay, well, with that box, we could kind of modify it. We could do a chamfer surface or a fillet surface, which would add a radius to the corner. And we could say, let's take this side and let's join it to that. I, my units are off. Let me create a new file. Large objects, inches. And let's try that again. So uh, let me create something. And this is going to be at 24 comma 18. And we'll say this is six inches tall. There it is. So what I was doing here is I was saying, OK, well, we have this. We could um, fill it the surface, uh, RF. And we can kind of round the surface over like that. But no matter how hard we try and how much we kind of put these pieces together, uh, even if we created that perfect corner here, it's a very contrived shape. It doesn't feel organic. It doesn't feel like it's been really used or, or uh, you know, it, it doesn't have the right kind of curving edges. So we need to work through a strategy that's going to allow us to create a shape that's not so orthogonal, that's, that's more organic. So let's start with some guides. And I'm going to do that using the rectangle corner to corner tool. And this is simply just going to be a guide that gives me what the, the overall shape of my cushion is going to be. Now, what I'm going to model first is kind of like the bottom of a couch cushion. So we'll start at 0, 0. And uh, I'm going to do it at 24 inches along the x axis, not 234. How about 24 inches along the x? We'll say 18 along the Y. These are arbitrary numbers. And that gives me this kind of basic shape as a guide. I could take this shape and I could copy it up, but I'm not going to do that quite yet. I want to kind of modify this shape a bit first. So if we look at this shape, if I were to explode it, it's made up of four separate line segments. 
And each of those line segments have two control points on the ends. If I took one of these line segments though, and I rebuilt it so it had more points on it, I could start to modify what that shape looks like. So let's take this one, for example, and I'm going to go up to uh, the transform menu, I think, maybe it's under edit. Yeah, so excuse me, it's under edit, and then I'm gonna choose rebuild. I typically type rebuild into the command line. And what rebuild allows us to do is it allows us to change the point count. So right now I could rebuild it by 10 points. See all those points that are added on here? We could drop that down to maybe five points and I'd have fewer points. Um, again, it's kind of a matter of deciding how many points you want. So let's do it at seven. My degree of curvature is by default one because it's a straight line. Two would allow it to curve in two directions and three would be three directions. For our purposes, it starts as a straight line, so it doesn't really matter. We can leave that at three. And then I'll go ahead and say, okay. And so it rebuilt that, and now I have all these control points on it. Let's rebuild the other line segments. I'll select those other three, and I'll go up to edit and rebuild again. And we'll rebuild all of those again with seven. We'll say, okay. And now we should have, yep, each one, if I were to select it, has seven different points that kind of modify it. So now that I have all these points, I can actually start to manipulate the curve with those points. So I could take, for example, those three middle points and I can move them out. I'm gonna type in move. And I can move them out just a little bit. And you see it starts to create a bit of an arc. That's obviously exaggerated. So I could just add a little bit to them. Maybe they come out just a bit like that. Furthermore, I could select, let me take both of these lines, I'll select them both, and I could modify the corner. So let me select just that corner, and I can move that corner in so that it's not as sharp of a corner. I can do that over here too. I do have to select both lines. Oops. There we go. I'm holding down shift, and then I can move those to back a little bit more. So I'm softening the corners. So let's select this and this. We'll select those points there. We'll move this in a little bit. Now I can move it all the way back to where it's a rounded corner, or I can leave it to have a little bit of an edge on it. it comes down to style of the, the cushion that you're making. You select those two, and I'll move these in right about like that. Now again, I have control, so I could move some of these other points in or out depending, but you know, for right now, they're reasonable. Let's go ahead and take another copy of this. So I'm gonna take this line that I created and I'm gonna copy it vertically. So I'll go up to transform and then copy. Notice one of my options is to copy vertically. So I can click on vertical and we're gonna copy it up by the thickness of the cushion. So let's say it's you know six inches. Now I have a second copy of it. Now I can start to manipulate these a little bit more in the third dimension. So in this scenario, maybe uh, I want to take uh, these three on the edge. And actually let's do it to both sides at the same time. I'll hold down shift. I'm gonna select those three points. Oops, come on. Select those three points. Let me select these three points. And then I'm gonna move them vertically just a little bit. So I pushed them up. Likewise, I could take these curves in the middle here, hold down shift again, and I could move them down a little bit, for example. Move V for vertical, and I can move them down just a little bit. Now, one of the keys to making realistic three-dimensional objects is to start thinking about what these look like in real life. So when you go home or you walk out to your living room, if you're already at home, look at your cushions and say, what do they look like? What do the dents look like? What do the depressions look like? Because ultimately what we're going to start creating is a surface based on these curves. So you can see that that curve is no longer flat. It's been tweaked just a little bit. Now I can take these four border curves and I can create a surface with them. So to do that, I can go up to surface and then choose curve network. 
if I type this command in, it's network SRF. And it's going to ask me to select the curves. Now, this is one of the critical components to this. And that is that we have to have curves that generally go in two directions. So we have curves that are generally going in the x direction in this case, there and there. And we have curves that are generally going in the y direction, there and there. So we need those two directions for this to actually successfully create a surface. When I hit Enter, it's going to give us a preview of what our surface would be. And our, uh, this allows us to adjust the tolerances and whatever. For our purposes today, all of the defaults here are just fine. And we can see that rather than having a flat surface, we actually have a surface that has a little bit of curvature to it. So we're getting to the direction where we're starting to have a more organic shape. This certainly has a better shape than the flat rectangle or the plain rectangle, but it's still not quite there. So let's think a little bit more about what defines this shape. Well, if we imagine that this seat had been sat in many times, well, maybe there'd be a little bit of a depression where each leg would be. So I might take these two points there and there, and I might move them vertically down a little bit more. Likewise, I might take this point and move it vertically up just a little bit. So I'm starting to create the depression where the legs would be. Now, realistically, if we were to sit on this, there'd probably be a bit of a depression in the middle here, you know, where the butt would go, for example. So let's add a curve. So I'll start with my polyline tool. I'm going to snap to the midpoint. I have midpoint turned on here. I'm going to snap to the midpoint. I'll go straight across and snap to the midpoint. Let's go ahead and get to the midpoint here. There it is. So I have that line going straight across. I'm going to take that line and rebuild it, just like I did with the other lines. So we'll type in rebuild or go to edit and then rebuild. I'll rebuild it with the same numbers here. And this time, I'm going to take these three, one, two, and three, and I'm going to move them down, move vertically. And we'll drop those down. So we have a bit of a depression where the butt would be. The stuffing has to go somewhere. So let's move this one vertically up just a little bit. Oops, sorry, too many points. Let me take just this point. Move V vertical. And we'll push that one up a little bit. So now I'm starting to create a profile curve in the middle. Like that. Now I can also create a profile curve that goes across this direction. The key here is that when I start to cross lines, I have to make sure that they line up. So I don't normally recommend the near snap, but in this case, the near snap is actually pretty useful. So I've checked near, and it's going to make sure it snaps on this line for me. So I'm going to go there. I'll come to the middle. Well, in ideal terms, it'll be perpendicular there. And I'll come back up to right. There it is, perpendicular. So I created this line right like that. And it snaps right in the middle. Let's rebuild this line. And we'll rebuild it by 7. And I'll say OK. And so now I can start to control this line. So let's drop these two points down. Move V for vertical. And we'll drop those down. Now we have a bit of a problem because, and it's hard to see, because those two lines, this line and this line, don't actually intersect. So we need those two to intersect. These points give us our general curvature, but they're not actually points on the line. So we can turn points on the line by coming over here and clicking on this button, which is curve edit points. So we've been working here with our object control points. We can turn our curve edit points on, and that will give us lines or points that are actually on our line, in which case we can select that point move, and I'm going to come up until that snaps onto this line. So now those two actually intersect. So one more time, there's a difference. We've been editing so far with our object control points, but we can take any one of these lines, come over here on our left side, and turn our curve edit points on, 
which then give us actual points on the curve to work with. And that's so that those two pieces match up and actually cross. So let's take a look at this as a network surface now. So I'm going to come up to my surface and then curve network. And I will choose. And I like to do these kind of as, a, as an order, even though I could select all of them at once. I like to think about this curve is going in the x direction. This curve is going in the x direction. This curve is going in the x direction. Then this curve is in the y. This curve is in the y. And this curve is in the y. Once I have those, I can go ahead and press Enter. And you'll see that my new surface is a much more complex surface. And it responds as if it were an older cushion that had been sat in many, many times. So that's a much better approximation than anything that we've started with. Well, we can do the same thing on the sides of this. So let's draw another line there to there. Let's draw another line from here to here. Let's flip it around and draw another line from there to there. And another line from that corner to that corner. So I've started to create those corners. Now I need to rebuild those. Now, we don't need nearly the number of points. We don't need seven points anymore. We really only need about three, because we only need to modify this, uh, this center point just a little bit. So let's take all of them, and let's rebuild them all by three. And then I'm going to move just this center point out. And sometimes it's helpful to look at this in the top view as we try to move it. So I've selected it in the perspective view. And then I'm going to move it out in the top view so that it just kind of has a bit of a bow to it. Then I'll take this one, select my point. I'll come over here, and I'll move it again. I could exaggerate it so you, maybe you can see it a little bit more. Let me bow it out a bit more. Let's come back to this one, and I'll bow this one out a little bit. Let's do that. There we go. Let me do the backs here. Let's move that one out. There we go. And then we'll come back to our last one right here, select it, and then move that out as well. So now I have that, those, that little bit of bowing that's been created. Now I could add another one, let's say in the back. Remember, when you start to observe this, you've got butt depression here. Therefore, the stuffing has to go somewhere. So having something in the middle here is not a bad place. Snap to middle again. There we go. Let me rebuild this. Rebuild. There we go. By three. Let me take that middle point. We're going to move that middle point out a lot further because that stuffing has to go somewhere like that. So once I have those, we're going to use the same strategy. We've got curves that are roughly going in, uh, what is this, the x direction. And then we've got curves that are going in the roughly the z direction this time, one, two, and three. And we can go up to our surface curve network, and it'll build that part of our cushion. Let's continue on and work our way around here. Let's take this one, this one, this one, and this one. And that'll build that. Same thing. So it's here and there. And then we'll take these two places. And we'll do, again, a network surface or go up to our surface curve network. And now we'll do our last one, which would be there, 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 and there. And again, the curve network. And we'll say OK. And that then gives us our overall cushion.
So there's a lot more definition on the top surface because I spent more time on the top surface. There's a little bit more on the back side here. But you can start to imagine this as an actual cushion, which is really kind of the point of what we're trying to do. So once we've created this, it comes time to start to apply our materials to it and kind of test it out. So we would go ahead and uh, open up V-Ray. So let me go to render, current renderer, V-Ray for Rhino. And then let's open that V-Ray asset editor. Let's open the drawer to the left. Let's look for fabric. And I really don't want to use carpet, but we could use any one of these fabrics. Let's use the purple, why not? It's so right click and uh, add to scene. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to apply it to the default layer because that's what I've been working on. And so now if I were to view this in rendered mode, we should see it. I'm not sure why it's not um, purple, but we should see it with the fabric on it. Now, we also need to worry about our texture mapping. This is roughly a box, so we may be able to get away with box mapping it. The alternative to that would be to surface map it, uh, though that's hard to keep it consistent. So let's try our box map. So I'll select all of my objects. I'll go up to my layers, or excuse me, my properties. We'll go over to texture mapping, and then we'll apply a box. Use a bounding box, world coordinates, and we'll cap it. And then we'll do x equals y equals z to make that material a little bit more uniform. And there it is. We've created that object. Now, if the texture was too big, remember we could select it and we could in, um, change the UVW repeat here to maybe 1.5. And that'll make the fabric a little bit smaller in its texture. So now sometimes people want to add a little bit of, uh, say, piping around the object. We can do that as well. Let's go back into our shaded mode. And this part is certainly optional. But what I can do is I can create a cross section. And let's say our diameter here is, uh, uh, it should be a little bit less, it's probably a 3 16 there it is. And then let me rotate this around. So right now it's flat, but I need to stand it up in three dimensions. So let's do a rotate 3D on it. Oops, helps if I can type here. Rotate 3D. And I'm going to snap to this outer edge. I'm going to hold down shift like this. And I'm going to rotate this up like that. I can also turn on ortho if I want. And then I need to rotate this around. So let's do a regular rotate. And we're going to rotate this so that it's roughly at 45 degrees to where our corner is. Okay, so now that I have that, I can follow this using that um, the sweep one rail technique. So let me go up to my surface, sweep one rail. I'll take this as my rail. And I'll take my sweep shape as this little arc here. I'll hit enter. There's my seam. I'll hit enter one more time. And now it's actually created like a little piping that goes along the edge. Can you join all the sides and do it for all the sides? Right. So that's the next, the next step. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It depends on how they come together. So I could take all of these and join them together, these side curves, or the sweep one rail actually has an option for us where we can chain edges. So I can click on chain edges and then I can actually, without joining them ahead of time, pick each curve going around. Like I said, this may work, it may not. It depends on the shape of our object. Unfortunately, mine kind of come to little corners here. If I had rounded the corners, it would probably follow around a little bit better. But let's give it a shot. So I've chained them all. Oh, how did I miss my sweep shape? Sorry, let me try it one more time. Let me chain my edges. One. Two. 
three, and four. And then my sweep shape is that one right there. I'll hit enter. There's my seam. And we'll say OK. And it basically followed around. Sometimes we have some issues at the joints. Yeah, that one doesn't look too bad. A lot of times when we do it, they're close enough. Yep, those corners all looked OK. So I was able to do that little bit of piping on it. Obviously, those don't have materials applied yet. So I would need to come back and take all of those segments and apply materials to them. Actually, they're on the, the um, excuse me, they are on the default layer. So they do have materials applied. Let's go back to rendered and see what they look like. So their, their texture is a little bit off. Uh, you know, we could obviously change it for a different fabric. We could also take one of these and apply a texture mapping to it. It's more closely going to resemble a uh, cylinder this time. So let me add my cylindrical map to it. There it is. Sure, we can do it as a bounding box. Uh, sure, we don't need to cap it. Let's show the mapping. And right now it's really kind of long. That's not what we want. Let's go to X equals Y equals Z. There it is. Let's use the gumball. And I'm going to rotate it so that it's going in that direction. Now we have a pretty good mapping on it for what it should look like. So let's go ahead and hide that mapping. And then I would need to do the same thing. The good news is we can match this mapping. We just come over here and match it to that mapping. So that side's done. And then we could take this piece and we could match it to that mapping, but we need to show this mapping and rotate it. So we'll need to come back and we'll rotate it 90 degrees. And now that one should look better. Not quite sure why. Let's move it over so it's more in the center of my object. Yeah, there we go. That's better. Looks like this one we're going to have to adjust to. So let's hide that one. Come back to this one. Let's show the mapping. I'll move it so it's in the center. There we go. And then this last side, we'll select it, match mapping to this one, show the mapping, and move it over so it's in the center as well, like that. Then we can hide that mapping. Forgot to hide this mapping over here. And now we've created a reasonable looking cushion. And that's really what it's about. Remember, we're not going to be rendering it this close. There's a little bit of distortion there. We're going to be rendering it from back here, and it's going to look just fine when we go to render it. So at this point, I'm going to save this cushion. This is the first style cushion. Obviously, I didn't do the bottom. I should probably do a curved network for the bottom, but um, it's going to be down sitting on something, so I'm not overly worried about it. So with this done, let me go ahead and save this. I'll go to File and then Save. Let me put it into a folder for today, and we'll come back to it here in a little bit. Okay, perfect. Let me open up a new one. So let me go to File and then New. We save that one. We'll come back to it in a little bit. And now this time, we're going to model a different style pillow. So last time we did kind of a couch cushion. What if we want to do more of a throw pillow? Well, a throw pillow is similar to what we were doing, but slightly different. So in this scenario, I'll again start with a rectangle. Let's do 0, 0 as our starting point. And this time I'm going to do it square. So I'll do 18, 18 to create that. As I did last time, oh, let me turn off that gumball. I find it distracting. I'm going to rebuild each of those. But before I do, I need to explode it. So let's break it into each side. So let's type explode. And then I can rebuild it. I'll go to edit and then rebuild. And we'll rebuild it by five this time. And I'll go ahead and say, OK. So now if I were to select these, we can see that we have access to the corners and we have some access to the middle. You could rebuild it by seven if you felt like you needed more control points. But for me, that, that's enough. 
I'm going to switch out of the perspective view and look at the top view. So with the top view selected, let's work on this side and this side. I'm going to take this corner and I'm again going to bring that corner in. Maybe about like that. I'll take these two. I'll bring this one in. And I'm really trying to, to create that outer boundary of what this pillow would look like. So let's take this and this. And we'll move that in just a little bit. Like that. And we'll take these two and move them in just a little bit. Now notice I'm not doing them all at once and I'm not moving them by the same amount. When we're working on organic shapes, we need some variance because they're not perfect. I'm going to take this top and I'm going to move that in as well because a lot of times there's a bit of a dimple on the top of the cushion. So we'll do it about like that. I could adjust these other ones just a bit. You know, maybe they're, they're coming in just a little bit. Like that. So now in this case, as I start to envision this cushion, I could once again, let me go back in here, I could create a curve that goes across the top and I could raise that up. I could do a curve that goes across this way and I could raise that up. That would be one method. And maybe I'll do that as an example, but I could also create a curve that goes across on a diagonal. So let's look at those two as examples and see what the difference is. I'm gonna copy this base shape over here so we can do it twice. So the first option would be to create a line that goes mid to mid like that and then rebuild it. Sure. And then let's take these two points. Actually, let's take all three. Let's move them V for vertical. We'll move those up. Let's take this middle point right there. Let's move it even more. Move like that. So you can see I'm starting to create that. Let's do a shape that goes across this way. Again, I'm going to rebuild it. I'll take all of them. We'll move V for vertical. Oh, it looks like I made a mistake and I didn't move this vertically. Let's move that a little bit more vertically and then let's correct it so that it's more straight. There we go. And so now remember, I want these two to touch one another. So I need to not use the object control points, but I need to use the actual curve edit points. There's my point. We'll move that point. Let me make sure I turn off near for right now. Let's move from the point there and let's make sure it's snapping to my object like that. So I've created those cross-sectional curves a little bit off. This may be an opportunity to use my near snap. So let's go from the point. Let me turn back on that near. Let's see if I can get this a little bit more in line. Like that. Perfect. So now that I have those, we can again use our curve network. So I'll go back to network surface. I've got a curve that's roughly in the y direction, those three. I've got these three that are in the X direction like that. I can hit enter and it'll build out that shape for me. Now, as I said before, I can kind of work this and have a seam that goes across instead. Uh, let me, I should show this in shaded mode so we can see it a little bit better. There you go. Let me go across in a diagonal. Let me rebuild this one. We'll do it with five again. Let's move these all vertically. And we'll move them up. We'll take that middle one and we'll move it vertically again. Like that. So I've created that cross-sectional curve. 
And in this scenario, right, I could create another cross-sectional curve here, but I don't really need it. I can take this, right? So we've got a problem. We've got curves that are generally in the Y. We've got curves that are generally in the X. And then we have a curve at a 45. So how do we work through that? Well, let's get them all going the same direction. And we can do that by essentially combining these two into one curve. So I can type in join, and that joins that. So this curve is roughly going at a 45. This one's roughly at a 45. Now I can join these two together. And so with these three curves, two and three, I can actually do a curved network. So we'll go up to surface and then choose curved network. Uh oh, come on. No, it's going to force me into a second curve. So I'm going to have to do the second curve anyway. So let's I didn't go understand next. the problem. Why? Why you should the join? Why did you join them? Uh, well, because I I wanted the the if this diagonal, I need curves that are going at 45 in this scenario. So this curve, even though it has a kink in it, is generally running the same direction as this curve which is generally running the same direction as this curve. I know this seems kind of weird. I wanna show you the difference in the final surface of what happens when I build it differently. So let me, let me do the same thing with this cross section. I need to rebuild it. We need to move these all up. V for vertical. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and turn the uh, curve edit points on, so I can select just that point Oops. there, and then we're selecting just this point, move V for vertical, and we want it to line up with, oh, come on. Hold on, it didn't quite line up. There we go. Okay. So now that I have those, so I have this curve, this curve, and that curve that are all going in this 45 degree direction. And then I have this one going in the opposite direction. And when I create curve network, surface curve network, it's going to build the shape in a little bit different manner. And so these two, when we create the back half, have different looks to how the shapes come together. And I'm just showing you this because it's a way of envisioning uh, how this curve network works. So let's create the back half. The good news is the back half can be mirrored from the front half. So all we have to do is select the surface, type in mirror. And our mirror plane here, we don't want to go in that direction. We want to do the mirror in either the front or the right side view. I'll hold down shift or turn on ortho to make sure that it's uh, happening in the front view. And then we end up with our second half of our cushion. Let's take this one, same thing, mirror. And we're going to mirror it in either the front or the right side view. And that builds the back half of our cushion. So it's just different strategies. I find that this, when it's rendered, looks more realistic than this one. So now that I have them, let's kind of rotate them up into position. So I'm going to do a rotate 3D. Actually, let's texture map them first where they're down. I think it'll be a little bit easier. So let's pick a new material. I'll go into my uh, V-Ray materials. Let's pick, let's try the red fabric this time. Let's apply, uh, excuse me, add to scene. And then I'm going to right click and put it on the default layer. And let's rename the default layer to be throw pillow, just for clarity. Okay. And so now if I were to turn on my rendered view, again, we're not seeing the color. I bet when we render it, we'll see the color. Yeah, that's when the color will come in. So we need to texture map here. So in this scenario, I think it's actually better rather than doing a box map, to do what's called a surface map. So let's come over here to our texture mapping and let's do this first one, which is apply surface mapping to it. And then we can do um, an X equals Y equals Z, they're already even. And let's change the repeat here up to maybe three 
So our texture gets a little bit smaller. The advantage here is that it's applying the texture to the surface rather than applying it. Um, so it, it follows the curves, essentially. So I like this one. Let's do the same thing for the bottom. We could do a, a match mapping bottom match to the top because they're the same. Let's do the same thing here with this cushion. Let's do a surface map. Let's up the repeat to three. Actually, it might be a little bit more because that cushion's a little bit bigger. What's 3.1? And then we can match, oh, excuse me. We could take this one and we could match it. Yeah, helps if I do it in the right order. This one can match to that one. And now we end up with a second cushion there. So let's rotate those so they're standing up. Let's go back. Oops, sorry. I want to go into my shaded mode here. And let's rotate them. In this scenario, rotating them with the um, uh, gumball might be a good strategy because we can kind of approximate it. So let's rotate it up first in that direction. How do we um, how do we make sure the gumball is just moving the texture and not the whole object? So in this case, I'm actually moving the whole object with it. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, but if you want to make it so that it's moving just the texture, you would select the object and then you'd click on the show mapping and you'd mm -hmm. be moving just the mapping. Okay, but in this cool. case, I'm moving the whole object. And I'm doing this because it's a little bit easier to kind of set it, oops, set it askew in three dimensions, which is kind of how these cushions are, are set. I could do a rotate 3D. It's just more work. So I could take this, let me turn off the gumball just so you can see it. And I'll do rotate 3D. And then we'll take this. And we can fold that up. Right. And then I could do a rotate. This is a regular rotate to kind of tip it back. And then if I wanted to tip it back a little bit further, I need to come back to the rotate 3D. And let's do it right along that axis. And then we'll try to tip it back just a little bit as if we we're sitting on something. It's just a little bit harder. The gumball makes life a little bit easier as we, as we start to do it. So those are just two different methods of creating a pillow. To me, the difference is how the edges come together. This one always tends to have a little bit flatter, skinnier edge to the pillow. So it's, a, it's like a kind of a papery wafer thin where these tend to come together a little bit more as a pillow. They're, they billow a little bit more. And it's just a personal preference. So there's those two. And those are my throw pillows. So let's save those. I'll go to file and then save as. And we can call this throw pillow. And I'll click save. Now I know I'm starting to run a little bit short on time. We started late, so that's part of it. But I want to introduce one more concept. So let me go to file and then new, and then we'll bring all of these in and do a rendering with them. I'm going to do a large object inches. And that is when we drape fabric over something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bit of a framework that would hold a, a sheet, for example. So I'm going to start with uh, a line at 0, 0. And then I'm going to draw a line that goes up over here. And we'll say, let's go up 10 feet in the y direction and over a foot. So that would be at um, 1 foot, comma, 10 feet, enter. And that definitely, that was 1 foot, 10 inches. Even I make mistakes. At 1 foot, comma, 10 feet, there we go, enter. And we'll go over here. Uh, I don't know. Let's go over here by, uh, let's go six feet. And then let's go from here. Actually, let's draw a line from here. We'll go over by 10 feet. Mm, let's go nine feet. Perfect. And then we'll come back and match those up. So this shape, right? I'm imagining this as if I'm gonna stretch a 10 foot piece of fabric to these posts. So let's go 
I'm going to draw a vertical line here. I'm going to switch into the front view so I can draw perfectly vertical. And we'll go up by eight feet there. And then let's copy this to all four corners. So this would be, and it, the framework doesn't really matter right now. I could build it out of wood. I could, I could add dimension to it. But essentially what I've done is I've created four points in space. And I want to imagine as if I created uh, something that was hanging. So if we imagine a rope, for example, and I wanted to hang a rope from here to here that was 10 feet long, what would it look like? Well, we can do that in Rhino using a command called a catenary. So I'm going to type in catenary. It's also under curve. And let me find it here, curve, catenary, there we go. So we're going to do a catenary specifically from a length, right? So it's going to ask for the start of the catenary. There it is. The end of the catenary would be there. And then it's going to say, uh, what's the axis? So we want the axis to be uh, pointed down. So I'm going to snap down. So the axis is down. And then it's going to ask for a catenary length. So our length here, we want to be 10 feet. And that didn't turn out the way I wanted it at all. Uh, let me try it one more time. Uh, our mode should be length. Let me just double check here. Yeah, it should be length start. And I love it when things don't turn out the way we want. Uh, our catenary access direction should be down. And now why is it being so difficult? Why do I have to draw this down? Hold on. I should be able to specify the length. That's what's... Uh, Yeah, that's the through point where I can create it myself, but I want to be able to. Hmm. All right, give me one more time. I apologize. Sometimes these things don't work the way you want them to. Uh, okay, so let's go back to that length. There's our start. There's our end. I must be messing up the direction. Uh... Let's do enter for the default. And I should be able to specify the length here. Hmm. I don't know. I'm going to have to come back to it, but that's really bugging me. So I'll do it through point, so we'll approximate it. But um, what a catenary curve is, is it's a mathematical curve as if you were hanging something between two points. Uh, so let's change this to be going down. And then I'm going to do it manually. Let me turn off my oh, snap here. Right, so I've created that as if I were hanging something. I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of the catenaries. So we're going to go from there to there. I really wish I understood why this isn't working the way it's supposed to. Well, come on, get shorter. All right, we'll do it like that for right now. Again, I'm just trying to get this approximate. And I will come back and figure out what I'm doing wrong and why I'm not creating it the way I wanted it to. But once I've created these like that, essentially what I can do is I can do that same curve network. So I can go back to network surface. And I can pick one, two, three, and four. And the shape that is created is as if I were hanging a piece of fabric from those points. So I can create a hammock, or I can create a tent canopy, or whatever, based on these points that I've created. Uh, and I think that's a really powerful tool to be able to, to work through fabrics. It's totally bugging me that this isn't working for me the way it's supposed to be. Basically, what I should be able to do is I should be able to say, 
the distance from here to here, maybe I'm just picking the distance wrong. Let me, hold on. I might've just figured it out. Ah, that's it. The distance that I was typing in, it's actually a little bit over 10 feet. So that was my mistake. So let me try it one more time. Sorry. Let's do a catenary. All right, so there's my start. There's my end. My direction is facing down. And my length here, let's do it at 12 feet. Yeah, there it is. I just didn't measure, didn't measure correctly. So what, let's, let's delete all of these. Let's assume for a second that I had a 12 foot by 12 foot piece of fabric, because that should be enough to, to cover all of these. Um, when I create the catenary, I'm gonna do it with a mode of length. I'm gonna pick my two points. This part, the axis direction, I just wanna be pointing down. And then I can specify my distance, 12 feet. So if I had a 12 foot rope and I tied it at this point and this point, that would be the shape that was created. Now, if I repeat the process and I went from here to there, once again, pointing down, and I said, my new one is also at 12 feet. It would look like that. If I came back and I said from here to here, again, I'm facing down and my new one, that's 12 feet. And from here to here, again, facing down 12 feet, this surface that I'm creating with these four catenaries would be the same as a uh, 12 foot by 12 foot square of fabric that was hung on each of these points. So the resulting curve network, that's why this is a really powerful tool. There, there, there. When I create the curve network, that is essentially a 12 foot by 12 foot piece of fabric that's stretched between those four points. That's what's neat and powerful about this. So if you're creating any kind of a tent or a canopy, that's where these catenaries really come into play. Okay, so I know that's kind of a lot to, um, to take in, but I, I like to introduce this as a concept. And of course, I totally butchered it and did a terrible job at it today. Um, but the key is to do the first two pillows. And then if you can create this kind of catenary shape, let's go ahead and add some material to it. We'll come in here. Let's put a, let's do a mesh fabric on it. Let's add it to the scene. Let's right click and say apply to selection or apply to layer default. And then I should rename my layer default here to be canopy. And then we'll go ahead and view it just to make sure that it looks okay. So let's go into rendered mode. There it is. So we see it kind of as this mesh. I'm going to leave it big so it casts a shadow when we do it. But in reality, it would probably be a little bit smaller. Let's save it. And then let's bring all of these together. So I'm going to open up, of course, Canvas isn't going to open. I'm going to open up that exercise 208 sample rendering file that I had last class. So let's go back to my files here. And let's go to my folder from last class. There's my base file. Let's open that one up. That is definitely not the base file I was looking for. Hold on a second. Let's see. There it is. Perfect. And again, the reason I'm using this is because it has all of the pieces. Come on. It has all of the pieces set up for the rendering. So at this point, we could turn off. Stock that up there. Let's go to my layers. I'm going to turn off the casement window. I'm going to bring in those things that I just created. Let me go to file and then, or excuse me, edit blocks, insert block instance. Let's start with my canopy. And let's 
start with the canopy. We'll say okay, we'll say okay. And we'll drop that canopy into place. Then we'll go to edit blocks, insert block instance. And I'm gonna bring in my little pillows. So we'll go to my couch cushion. It's gonna be linked as a reference. We'll say okay. Okay, and that's gonna show up right here. And then I need my other two. So I'll go to edit blocks, block, uh, insert block instance. And we're looking for my throw pillows this time. There they are. Let's say okay and okay. There's my little throw pillows. And so now I've created this, this little mini scene. Uh, looks like I have a slight little intersection. Let's move those back a bit like that. And then we can go ahead and do a little render and see what happens. Oh, my canopy's much too long here. Move, let's bring those forward so that the canopy's not against them. There we go. And then we can go ahead and do, do the full render. This is the part that you'll actually turn in after you've done it. So yep, yeah, there's my um, canopy. There's my cushions, they're turning out. We'll let those render, I'll save this, and then I'll post that uh, on Canvas as part of exercise 209. Uh, I apologize, it shows you that sometimes even I make mistakes. So I apologize for the catenary not working the way it was supposed to, uh, but hopefully you got the gist of what we were after today. Okay, so this is your intro to organic shapes. We will continue doing organic shapes going forward. So this is just the tip of the iceberg, so to speak. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys uh, leave. We do have our check-ins this week. So if you didn't come on Monday, you need to make sure that you're coming um, today so that you get your credit for checking in. Uh, it is 1220 right now. We're gonna be off time a little bit. So let's start our first check-in at 1230. Gives everybody a quick break. Um, you're more than welcome to stay around, but um, you're free to go at this point.